Entering medicine in Australia is undoubtedly one of the most challenging university pathways. It requires many hours of study and plenty of hard work, but with the right passion and commitment, you could find yourself as a future doctor. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Owen and I'm a first year medical student studying at Monash University in Australia. This is my first video on the Entry to Med series where we discuss the tips and tricks to help you secure a position at an Australian medical school. Today we're taking a look at the guide I've created for you guys to help you decide whether medicine is the right course for you. I've broken it down all into the core components so please stick to the very end of the video to make sure that you don't miss out on anything important. And without further ado, let's get right in. So in Australia, you have two types of course structures. You have undergraduate and postgraduate options. And with that, you also have two types of payment options, which are Commonwealth supported places or full fee paying places. Undergraduate courses are generally five to six years, and you can enter these straight from high school compared to postgraduate, which adds up to seven years because you have to complete a bachelor's degree before you can enter the medicine degree. However, do keep in mind that no matter where you go in Australia, you are fully accredited to practice as a doctor, either through the MBBS degree or the MD degree. For payment options, Commonwealth supported places or CSPs generally set you back about $11,000 per year or otherwise if you choose to go to a full fee paying university you're looking to pay about $60,000 to $80,000 a year. Also keep in mind that international students will have to pay these full fee paying options if you choose to come from another country and study in Australia. For the sake of this video I'll be mainly sticking to undergraduate entry options because this is by far the easiest option of the two and for a number of reasons including lower cumulative fees as well as not having having to set the exam called the GAMSAT. In terms of requirements for entry, these are usually broken down into three categories which are the UCAT, ATAR and interviews. These are balanced with a one-third split between each and so in year 12 it's really important to balance all of these equally to make sure that you end up with a good chance of entering med school. Thankfully in 2022 I ended up with a good well-rounded balance of the three and I was accepted into almost every state for medical school in Australia. So the UCAT is the University Clinical Aptitude Test which is a two-hour computer-based online exam which tests cognitive ability for the fields of medicine and dentistry. It has five subsets in total, so you have verbal reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, and situational judgment, and you are scored out of a mark of 3,600. Generally, a competitive score to enter most medical schools is around 3,000 or the 90th percentile, but this obviously varies largely from year to year. As you can see from a bunch of sample questions here, the exam quite closely resembles something similar to an IQ test, but it's obviously geared towards a framework of thinking that's required for medicine and dentistry specifically. It's worth noting also that this exam can be used for entering New Zealand medical schools too, so that's cool to know. As for the ATAR, this is the Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank, which is a ranking basically generated from your Year 12 subjects in high school. And there generally is a subject prerequisite for medicine of doing chemistry and also having a passing grade in English. ATAR is a ranking from 0 to 99.95, which basically represents a percentile on a bell curve where you're ranked against other participants in your state. Generally, the higher ATAR, the better. And for medicine, you're looking at a competitive ATAR of about 98 to 99 but on the other hand you can enter with a lower ATAR in the low 90s if you do have special considerations or are from a rural area. Alright so interviews are broadly broken down into two types which are multiple mini interviews, MMIs or panel style interviews. MMIs are a style of interview where you have a station which runs for about 10 minutes with an individual interviewer and a scenario given. Once the 10 minutes are up, you switch to a new station, repeat the process for another 10 minutes, and this goes from for about six to eight stations. On the other hand, panel interviews are more a standard job style interview where you have the interviewer asking you a series of questions for about 20 to 30 minutes in a discussion style formal setting. So while the format of MMIs and panel interviews are slightly different, it is important to recognise that the topics being tested are largely similar, which do revolve around ethical reasoning, empathy, motivation to do medicine and critical thinking. Thankfully, since COVID in 2020, most of the interviews have gone to being online, so there is no need to fly around Australia and go to these interviews at your own expense. Before we finish up, please consider these important tips to make sure you maximise your chance of getting into medical school. 
Firstly, understand that there are multiple pathways to getting into med. It is not a be all end all type situation if you don't get in the first time. There are other ways to get in too. You can go through the postgrad option, you can take a gap year to reset the UCAT, you can switch out of another degree if you don't like it already. And just remember that if you do have the motivation and the commitment to do medicine, you will pursue and follow through with what you want to do. Secondly, some universities such as JCU and UNSW do require a written application to enter med. So that's something worth considering too. Thirdly, being a rural student does matter. It significantly eases your workload during year 12 because the requirements for entering medicine are quite significantly lower for rural students. So do have a look at this website over here to check out whether you classify as being a rural student or not. And finally, make sure that you stay up to date with information on university websites. Like I mentioned before, every university is different in their requirements to enter medicine. And by the time you're watching this video, something may have changed so make sure that you're staying up to date with the latest information. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. Entering medicine is a difficult but extremely rewarding journey for anyone with the right commitment. Feel free to hit me up with any questions should you have any and leave comments on what you'd like to see for the next video. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss a single upcoming video in this series. Until then, have fun, keep studying and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.